The new ROG Xbox Ally X is right around the corner, and so far we've seen a few games running on this thing. Uh, I was actually able to go hands-on with it, and I was able to test a few, like Hogwarts Legacy, Doom the Dark Ages, and uh, Gears of War Reloaded. Performance felt decent on all of the games that I was able to test here, but it was kind of a curated event, so they really showed us what they wanted us to see. I was also able to go hands-on with the ROG Xbox Ally, but I'm more excited about the X model here because it's powered by the all-new AMD Ryzen AI Z2 Extreme. Now, unfortunately, I don't have access to that exact chip, but I do have two devices that have a very similar chip, the AMD Ryzen Z2 Extreme. There's only one key difference here, and it's really not going to affect gaming performance, at least at the time of making this video. I've got the MSI Claw A8 and another device that I can't show off on camera just yet. Keep an eye on the channel. It's a couple weeks off, but it's going to be pretty exciting. So yeah, definitely stay tuned. But with this device here, I've been doing a lot of tuning, and to tell you the truth, with the power profiles that came included, I was not that impressed with the Z2 Extreme. But I've managed to extract much more performance out of it, even at lower TDPs. So in this video, I wanted to use this chip to kind of gauge the performance we're going to see out of the upcoming ROG Xbox Ally X, just to see if it would be worth, uh, you know, picking that up once it launches in October. Because again, so far, we've seen very limited gameplay, and I don't think we've seen any real benchmarks out of the X yet. Okay, so here's the deal. A lot of you may know that we've got the AMD Ryzen Z2 Extreme and the AMD Ryzen AI Z2 Extreme. The only difference between these two chips is that NPU. So it's got an XDNA2 NPU up to 50 tops of AI performance. That's the one that's going to be used in the ROG Xbox Ally X. When it comes to core count, core clocks, and even that RDNA 3.5 16CU iGPU, they're all the same. But the big thing to keep in mind here is this is set up in a different kind of way than let's say the Z1 Extreme. With this, we do have eight cores and 16 threads, but it's configured in a way where we've got three Zen 5 cores and five Zen 5C cores. The Zen 5C cores are lower powered. Basically, they just clock up a little less. The Zen 5 cores clock up to five gigahertz and the Zen 5C cores clock up to 3.3. And in some of the early tests that we've seen with that Z2 Extreme, at higher wattages, CPU performance is falling behind the Z1 Extreme, and I believe that this is the reason. Even though we've got Zen 5 cores here, we've got that much lower clock on those five Zen 5C cores. But another important thing here is the RAM we're using. With the unit that I'm testing, the MSI Claw A8, we've got 24 gigs of LP DDR5X at 8,000 megatransfers per second. That's the same thing that's going to be used in the ROG Xbox Ally X. Really, the biggest difference when it comes to gaming performance here is going to be the performance profile set by the manufacturer. And we know that ASUS actually does make some really good uh, power profiles for their chips, especially when it comes to something like the ROG Ally X with that Z1 Extreme. But I do think at least with this AMD driver we're using right now, we're going to get pretty close to the performance we're going to see out of that device when it's released. Okay, so like I mentioned, I've been doing a lot of testing and tuning with the device I have right now just to get better performance out of it. And what you're seeing on screen right now is Cyberpunk 2077 1080p Steam Deck preset and we're at a 25 watt TDP. 25 watts is going to be performance mode and that's kind of how it is. Dropping it down to 17 is going to be our balanced mode. We can even go lower than that. But at 17 to 18 watts, we'll need to drop the resolution down to 900p to see this kind of performance here. Overall, it's actually not that bad, pretty smooth, and with the ROG Xbox Ally X, we're going to have that variable refresh rate display, so dipping under 60 isn't going to be too horrible, and I'll tell you, with the Z2 Extreme chip, even just sitting at those same settings, but dropping it down to 900p at 25 watts, doesn't increase that frame rate by a lot. I was actually expecting to get a nice bump in performance. We'd actually have to drop those uh, graphic settings down to around medium because with the Steam Deck preset, we've kind of got a medium high mix going. And it's not that bad. 900p on a 7 inch display still looks really good. Personally, with most of the games that I have right now on the original ROG Ally, I don't mind playing at 800 and 900. I do try to take it up to at least 900. Doesn't make a huge difference going from that to 1080 on a super small display like this. But there's something else we can do here with the Z2 Extreme, and it kind of involves locking the frame rate. Some people don't mind playing at 30, 35, even 40 FPS. We're at high settings right now, 1080, and I'm going to lock it at 30. We're still at a 25 watt TDP. 
but the game will stay steady at 30 FPS, high settings right here. It's actually pretty decent. In fact, if I unlock the frame rate, it does go up to around 36, but we've got some dips under that 36, so I'd say 30 would be a sweet spot. Medium, you can lock down at 45. And with all of these tests, I wanted to keep it between 17 watts up to 25 with all of the games. That way, you know, that's something we could do on battery. We're gonna have an 80 watt hour battery in the ROG Xbox Ally X, and we could still see some really good runtime out of it, even at a 25 watt TDP. The next game I have here is Forza Horizon 5. This is one I always test on iGPUs. And with this, I'm pretty impressed because we're at 1080. I'm not using any scaling, so we don't have FSR, XESS, or CAS. And we're at the high preset. On the Z1 Extreme, in order to do this, I have to go down to that medium preset. But now we're over 80 FPS with it at 25 watts. And we can run this game at 15 watts over 60. It just depends on what kind of resolution and settings you want to use. For instance, you could take that resolution down to 900p, keep it right there at high settings, and take the TDP down to 17 watts. That way you can get much more runtime out of it on battery and still see over 70 FPS on average. It does look great like this, and you know, running this game at high on a handheld 17 watts is pretty impressive if you ask me. No, it's an easier one to run, but it's still pretty awesome to do this. God of War Ragnarok, and to tell you the truth, it's not that far off from what the Z1 Extreme is putting out. We might be getting a few more frames here and there. But with this game, you know, if you want to run it on a handheld and save battery, take it down to like 18 watts, which we're at right now. 900p medium settings with frame gen on. On the Z1 Extreme, I usually go to low settings, and I'm seeing around the same kind of frame rate here. Marvel Rivals is kind of in a weird spot when it comes to these handhelds because we've got limited resolution options. You can do either 1080 or 720. Unfortunately, there's no 900p setting. So right now we're at 1080 low with FSR set to balanced at 25 watts. I do believe with these same settings at around 18 watts, 900p, we could still get over 60 and have a pretty good time with it. I wanted to put one fighting game in, so we've got Mortal Kombat 1 at 900p medium, 20 watt TDP. We can do 1080 at 25 watts, but again, I wanted to save battery here. And you can see it kind of fluctuating between 59 to 60. It's very normal for this game, but overall it's really playable. And the final game I wanted to test was Fortnite, and I personally don't play this, so I'm not like in a battle match. As soon as I get in there, I'll just get uh, destroyed. But I was actually impressed by the performance here. We're at 1080, medium settings, 25 watt TDP. And I understand that this is a game that somebody would play for quite some time. So I also wanted to test this at a lower TDP. So I went down to 17 watts. I didn't change the resolution or the settings and we're not that far off from where we were when we were running it at a 25 watt TDP. And this has kind of been the case with a lot of the esports games that I've been testing on the Z2 Extreme. Uh, taking the wattage down doesn't affect it all that much at a certain setting, so this is going to be really beneficial for battery life. So yeah, I mean, there's no doubt we'll see some decent performance out of the Z2, and I'm kind of starting to warm up to the chip itself. Uh, it's been a little while since I've had my hands on it, but with some of the power profiles that I've been testing, some of the uh, tuning that was done from the factory just wasn't as good as it could be, in my opinion. Now that I've got two devices powered by this chip in my possession, I was able to go back and forth to compare. And, you know, with what I've got right now on the A8, we are getting much better performance than we were with it right out of the box. But I do expect to see a little more once the ROG Xbox Ally X hits the market. Now, it's not going to be, you know, a huge jump in performance, maybe a few frames here and there. But I think what we saw today is going to be really close to what we're going to see on that device at those certain TDPs. And as soon as I can get my hands on the ROG Xbox Ally X and test it out without somebody looking over my shoulder, I'll make a ton of videos on that. I've also got this other one that I can't show off just yet. Uh, maybe two weeks out, might be a little more, but uh, keep an eye out on my community page and the channel itself. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. And let me know in the comments below between the performance you've seen across the board with all of the videos out there with that Z2 Extreme and the MSI Claw A8, is the performance enough to get you to upgrade from the Z1? Are you going to keep what you have? Let us know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.